What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another Dota 2 commentary. This is a matchup yeah, from Star Ladder Season 7 between Navi and Virtus Pro. And this is the first cast I've done in about two months, if you can believe it. As I think the last cast I did do was in July, so it's been a while. Navi's but the Dota tournaments to have been hitting up in higher gear recently. And of course, these are two of the most powerful CIS teams at the moment. Although Virtus Pro has been struggling recently, keep in mind they did get rid of pretty much four of their last uh, five players, Ten only seconds. keeping NS on. Instead, they have Resolution, God, Gold Black, as well as Light of five Heaven, seconds. instead mm -hmm. of um, Illidan, KSI, Arzart, and Tame My Wild, aka Crazy. So it's been a huge roster shift, and that's why Virtus Pro has been struggling. Virtus Although I have full faith that Virtus Pro can turn around, and I hope Virtus Pro can turn around because they are one of the my most favorite teams to watch because they just play with absolute disregard to human safety. They just play with the most eye-appeasing aggression that you can possibly seconds. see in Dota. Me on Navi, I think in this game they have Funic being stood in for, Five and I think the player's name is Wex. So Funic, yes, he's still on the team. Navi had a slight bit of drama, but Havost eventually he's apologized, and Navi's core roster is remaining the same. So, I mean, <laughs> what more can you ask for after you get back-to-back -back second places at TI3, or the past two internationals? I mean, they did well enough. They took Alliance to the fifth and final game, Navi and just a couple poor decisions bad. managed to unfortunately net them second place rather than first place so I don't think too many people were too surprised that Navi managed to stay with the same roster although there were rumors in the works that either Kuroki or somebody else would get removed but I personally am quite glad that Navi remaining. is keeping a consistent roster and meanwhile Virtus Pro again like Five I mentioned previously remaining. are playing with an entirely different team for the most part aside from NS who's not even captaining it looks He's like Resolution's doing a drafting in this game no doubt being helped out by Goldblatt quite a bit so anyways, before this game truly and really gets started, just want to talk about a couple of things. One is the project that I've been working on, the great games in Dota history. If you have not watched my first video, it's DTS vs. Ehome. It's sort of a pseudo highlights video with commentary and a little bit of background information about the current day as well as the metagame at that time. And it seems like most people, they liked it, they have a lot of criticism, and I can definitely take that criticism. And I'm trying desperately to fix it. I already think I have a solution to the giant overlay cutting off now the screen. The reason why I had that giant overlay is because otherwise you'd see the replay bar and you'd see my mouse spazzing out in the bottom because, I mean, Dota 1 interface is a lot different. And of course, keep in mind, you can't rewind in Dota 1, so I had to take a lot of recordings, which is why my sort of creation process took so long and why my commentary might have been a bit sped up. Because basically, I took recordings of my or I took recordings of the game and then I tried to commentate over the specific portions of the game in post production. So as you can imagine it did speed up my commentary by quite a bit. And again I wanted to keep the game under twenty minutes because if it was more than that then I might as well just have cast the freaking game. So <laughs> There goes a couple of criticisms right there. Um, hopefully I can just slow down the speed that I'm talking, or may just isolate Five some of the more key remaining. incidents rather than just every single kill and every single tower being taken. Although in that game, every tower being taken was pretty important. And it seems like uh, most people like the general scope of it. Uh, for the people who don't like my voice, I mean, sorry. <laughs> if I want to speak in a calm tone of voice, this is the voice you're probably going to hear, so... Not much more I can say about that. Now unless you want to be speaking... Not this voice, which I don't know. I guess I could get a voice synthesizer, which just sounds utterly stupid. So sorry if you don't like my voice. Whatever. Anyways, uh, next video will hopefully be out this week. Um, in that particular series, again, they are enormously time-consuming. But now that I have a better grasp on what needs to be done, hopefully it won't take like a month like it did last time. I spent probably over 40 hours into that video, but again, that was the first time ever doing a project of that scope, and I got very frustrated, which is why it took a long time. But hopefully experience will sort of lessen the scope of what I was trying to do. And most people want to see MYM vs. Navi in the Farm for Fame game, so I'll probably do that one, and then I'll leave a choice uh, going over the next three that I want to do, or give you a choice of what potentially people might want to see next in regards to the next great games in Dota history. Anyway, before we get into the game and picks and bans, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I have not been watching competitive Dota whatsoever, so I can't really give you a full 
dressing down on why these bans are taking place other than I know Abaddon has been trending very very hard and yes it is actually Abaddon it's not Abaddon it's Abaddon if you listen to Abaddon when you pick him in Dota 2 he calls himself Abaddon but it seems like these picks are very standard outside of the Abaddon which has been trending very highly recently and Navi actually going to pick up the Storm Spirit for Denny. Interesting choice, but I guess they want to have that nice setup for the Lifestar Bomb, and Puck was already previously banned out. And Navi, it's going to be interesting to see because I think Funic is probably the best teamfight Darkseer in the world. I don't know if he's necessarily the best laning Darkseer in the world. I mean, I can't really compare him to anybody else, but he's definitely the best teamfight Darkseer in the world, and he's not playing this particular game. So we'll see if Navi still have that synergy going in with their teamfights. I Meanwhile, you know, Virtus Pro picked up a more, I guess, endurance heavy lineup. They have been a team who's been faving Naga Five quite hard, remaining. and looks like Weaver, again, a very survivable hero who does do very well against Life Store. Although, if Storm Spirit does manage to get a fast Orchid online, that could be troll for the Weaver. Anyways, um, I'm probably going to cast a couple games in this tournament. I won't do, like, eight, 100 casts in a row. I want to just switch up the content. So hopefully it won't get too boring, so I might throw in a pub task adventure here and there, or some sort of me playing game, although I just want to show you something. Six hours in the past two weeks I spent on Dota 2, so I haven't been playing the game too much. Um, but yeah, gonna do maybe three to four casts a week, one great games in Dota history, one or two pubs, and one or two analysis of a shred kid. Maybe a bit more if when it comes to casts, I don't know, I might even do more than one video a day if it comes down to it so hopefully you'll enjoy it i do intend on getting back to the regular schedule so hopefully you'll spread the word and keep an eye out for me anyways navi ban out the marana virtus pro picked up pick. the clockwork so one thing to note about virtus pro is that they seem to have a be having a bit of problems with their sort of roles. I know when Virtus Pro first came into conception of this new lineup, I think God was playing the hard carry and Resolution was playing the mid, or it might have been vice versa, or Light of Heaven playing the carry. They just switched down the roles to a ridiculously difficult degree, and I am a firm believer that even though Virtus Pro was, uh, placed very poorly in their national, their support play with NS as well as Arzart was very, very difficult to be matched. And I thought the main problems were KSI, Illidan, as well as Tamo Wild. And you know me, Virtus Pro and Fnatic are my favorite teams going into the National. So we'll see if uh, Goblak can fit into that synergy with NS as well. Meal and Navi, you all know that they are ridiculously talented, and they're going to actually pick up a Crystal Main. So the Visage indicated that would be an aggressive trial, and the Crystal Main ensures that it will be an aggressive trial. And that's going to be interesting to see how Virtus Pro takes. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Virtus.pro responds to this, because they could have potentially put the Clockwork mid against Storm. I mean, Clockwork remaining. doesn't beat Storm, but he can hold his own. But Five now, if Virtus.pro don't pick up a very survivable carry, which I don't really see who's left in the pool, Alchemist would definitely time. not work. And Naga, he, she isn't really the best defensive support, especially against the long-range initiation of Visage as well as Crystal Main. So they might be forced to put Weaver in the safe lane capacity, put Clockwork in the off lane, and then get a stronger mid that can potentially semi-carry in the mid game against Storm. Because if Navi get off to a good start, Visage, Storm, Lightstar, and Darkstar can potentially steamroll Virtus Pro. And Virtus Pro, if you look at their damage output, it's really not that impressive. Weaver is decent at dealing damage, but getting through the ridiculously tanky nature of Lifestar as well as Visage, and even Darkseer builds into that fast mech, and of course, the incredible maneuverability of Storm Spirit. It's going to be ridiculously difficult for Weaver to deal out all the damage by himself. Clockwork, not really the best hero against Lifestar or Visage as well, and that's why Virtus.pro is going to pick up the Queen of Pain. I think they realize they need to get some burst damage, and it actually will be Resolution playing that mid solo co-op up against Havos playing the Storm. This is definitely going to be a roll swap. Dendi is going to be playing the Storm, and Havos will swap with the Light Stealer. So, Light of Heaven, Clockwork. Um, Clockwork isn't really a Light of Heaven hero, in my opinion. I think Light of Heaven probably is more suited to roles like Nature's Prophet, uh, Lone Druid, even Darkseer. I think he wants more of those farming offlaners yeah, rather than that. those utility offlaners. But we'll see how it goes around. And Light of Heaven, of course, a very talented player, although he has been pretty rusty getting himself back into shape. He did play with Empire for a bit um, after TI3, and I guess he had the transfer fee over. But it seems to be working out thus far. Virtus Pro are struggling, but Empire is doing quite well. So I'm really glad that the most aggressive region of 
Dota is sort of coming together because again if you like aggressive Dota there's really not much more that can be said other than keep your eyes out on the Russian scene because they love themselves these kills. Anyway, introducing the players and the teams on the side of Navi, we're going to have Puppy playing the Crystal Main, Havos is playing the Lightstar, Dendi is playing the Storm Spare, Kuroki is playing the Visage, and I think this is Wex, who is standing in for Funic on the Dark Sea Meal on the side of Virtus Pro. We're going to have Resolution playing the Queen of Pain, one of the most tremendous mid players in the European region. I'll go over that in just a bit, uh, as does uh, something. I think that's God, he's playing the Weaver, Gold Black is playing the Chen, Light of Heaven is playing the Clockwork, and NS is playing the Naga Siren. So if you guys aren't too familiar with Resolution, you actually play on IC Cup, and many people the were very question, or many people had doubts on IC Cup because they were a team who was invited to the qualifiers rather than a team like Kaipi, now known as Rattlesnake International, and they didn't really know why because IC Cup didn't really do that many impressive things, but as more and more people paid attention to IC Cup, they realized that Resolution was pretty much their best player as he has some ridiculous talent in the mid lane position and I'm glad that they sort of made the role switch back to the mid lane position. I don't know if they were experimenting with God in the mid lane again because he was used, utilizing that role on LGD International but it seems like Resolution no. is not going to be the stable mid player for Virtus Pro. Mil and Navi, even though they had the makings of a very strong aggressive challenge, it seems like they're going to bend that for the most part. Maybe they felt like they couldn't have enough firepower to burst down the Weaver, and there is something to be said about that, although Naga... Well, yeah, I guess they really can't do anything about the Weaver other than a Frostbite, and level 1 Frostbite, it only holds people in place for 1.5 seconds, so that's definitely not going to be enough time to burst down the ridiculously survival Weaver. And meanwhile, Chen is just going to be very happy to defensive jungle it up, but I'm not too sure if this is the best play for Navi because, again, Virtus Pro's main weakness in the early game is their lack of damage, especially when Queen of Pain is sort of confined to the mid lane. And keep in mind, Virtus Pro went pretty greedy with the Queen of Pain. You can see she was pulled quite a bit, a salve as well as a set of tangos. So they want to make sure that Resolution does as well as possible mid lane, but that means they are sacrificing quite a bit on their supports in terms of regeneration. But likewise, Navi are sacrificing a bit on their supports as well because they pulled Dendi and that means Den that means their own supports might not have had enough firepower to go Denied. on the offensive even though they do have a ridiculously damaging lineup. But I think the most important thing to keep in mind is that they aren't applying pressure to a lineup with Chen and that means Chen can pretty much farm all by himself and get a very very fast mecha if at all possible. So if Chen manages to pick up a fast mecha, that means Darkseer, well, he's going to be one of his way to picking up his own mech as he has abandoned the offlane completely. And God is just going to be free farming, and in the long run, Weaver with free farm is definitely a lot more threatening than a Leicester with free farm. Although, I mean, Leicester with free farm definitely comes into effect a lot more quickly in comparison to Weaver. But the main focus will definitely be on the mid lane as Resolution is 7 4 against Storm Spirit, who is currently uh, 5 and 2. Man, I'm just completely forgetting how to look at these stat screens as it's been a while. Danny missing last hit here and there. Resolution, again, a very competent mid player. And looks like both heroes having a bit of trouble trying to secure their bottle. But Please. so far, Dendi. Not having that good of a time, although Queen of Pain should have the innate advantage because, again, she has a longer range and she has a better amount of attack damage in comparison. Of course, she has a, an easier way to harassment with that Shadow Strike ability. But it looks like Dendi could potentially be in a bit of trouble as there is going to be a wraparound smoke gank, but there is a nicely placed Radiant Sentry Ward being positioned by likely Puppy on that middle lane, perhaps anticipating the smoke gank, or definitely anticipating the smoke gank, and knowing that this would be the best path. And Virtus Pro, well, they know the jig is up, so they're just going to counter with the sentry. And Virtus Pro, all they did was spend a bit of time, and they utilized the smoke and a sentry, so they definitely came out worse for wear in that exchange, as Darkseer is going to be free farming. But at the very least, Denny was forced back as a result, and that means Resolution, well, looks like Resolution has sort of been losing out in terms of the overall CS department, although his denies have been quite powerful. You know, Goldwax seems like he's just going to be pressuring mid, just saying, Denny, here, I'm, I'm right here, what are you going to do about it? But Light of Heaven on the bottom lane, finally going to see some creeps die, as 
clockwork in comparison to other offlanes, whether it be Lone Druid, Nature's Prophet, Darkseer. He can't go into the jungle. He just has to sit here and hope that his other team, his teammates can win the lanes and that can sort of force pressure from the supports away and then he can finally get some experience. And that's why you don't really see Clockwork as a permanent fixture in the off lane because Bounty Arm can usually get some form of experience by hiding in nook and, nooks and crannies. Nature's Prophet can go into the jungle. Darkso can go into the jungle. And Lone Druid can go into the jungle. Clockwork cannot. Clockwork cannot jungle. So yes, is just sit in the lane until he dies Radiance or until he just forfeits attack. life, I guess. But slowly but surely, it looks like Resolution is starting to climb ahead of Dendi in terms of the CS department. Definitely has more denies and has a better CS score at the moment. But again, Storm Spirit isn't really expected to win most lanes. All he wants to do is hit that level 6, may get a bit of momentum, and Life Star should be hitting level 6 at around the same point. And keep in mind, Navi's definitely coming out ahead in the long run, even though the sports are getting a slightly lower chunk of experience. But Buppy is level 3, utilizing the Frostbite and the neutrals, and Kuroki with the pulls is already level 4.5. But the reason why Navi is far ahead is because of their offlane. Their Darkseer is already level 5.5, meanwhile Clockwork is level 2. So Navi, if you take a look at the experience graph, is going to be well ahead. 750, oh, yeah. almost 1k experience advantage at this stage is definitely nothing to sneeze at. So now that the first gank by Virtus Pro has sort of failed, I wonder what the sports will do to try to force some response by Navi. And usually the correct option is just to pressure this uh, offlane tower quite a bit. But it seems like Virtus Pro aren't too keen on doing that. They just want to get God as much secure farm as possible. But they are going to delay the effectiveness of Clockwork by quite a bit as a result because he's not going to be getting experience while Darkseer and even the sports on Navi are getting quite a bit in exchange. <laughs> but looks like Weaver is outfarming Havost. Havost looks like he's just trying to deny a bit more rather than getting every single last hit, which is understandable because even though you might be saying, well, why isn't Havost getting every single last hit? He's not facing anybody. Well, technically he is and he wants to control the creepy gloom. He wants to make sure Clover gets no experience. Meanwhile, you know, Weaver doesn't really care because Darkseer has not showed his face in lane whatsoever, and he probably knows that Darkseer is getting unmitigated amounts of experience in exchange. So he doesn't really have to worry about Creepy Gloom Room, but Havost is doing the smart play, and he knows that in order to sap the levels of Clockwork as much as possible, he might have to sacrifice some CS here and there. So the fact of the matter is that he's only down by 6 CS is quite good. Meanwhile, Kuroki pops a Grave Chill and a Dull Danger, and gonna go to work on Light of Heaven. Light of Heaven should be okay. A bit surprised he hasn't popped the cogs just yet. But Kuroki just not able to get enough for his soul assumption. No, Kuroki is going to pick up the first blood. Bit of a mistake by Light of Heaven. I think he could have potentially cast that cogs maybe over here and got the pushback. I don't know why his cogs are so late. Maybe want to save as much mana as possible. Definitely a miss by Light of Heaven. But again, he is in an unenviable situation. He cannot do anything except to not die. And... Unfortunately for him, he did die, so life is pretty hard at the moment. I mean, it all seems like Virtus Pro starting to finally get some momentum on the top lane, but you can see the immediate rotation by Wex the Darkseer, as he is already in position to cast Iron Shells on the creeps, and although NS is here with the Riptide, and they have a Ring of Aquila to boost up the armor of the creeps, I think this tower push can be defended, even though there is a siege unit in place. The question is how fast can these creeps die? The double iron shell definitely going to work on the creep wave, and this tower will in fact be defended. Oh, Y'all are going to see a bit of movement by Dendi, but right. Resolution just going to blink on out of there. You saw Puppy rotate through, but I think they probably knew that they wouldn't be able to catch Resolution, just looking to apply as much pressure as possible, just keeping Resolution on his toes. And Dendi getting out old by a full level in response. But again, Queen of Pain is expected to win mid lane battle against Storm Spirit. As they're going to see it engaging the jungle, Puppy in a lot of trouble, but just simply not enough damage. As the Frostbite will go to work on this neutral creep. And I'm not too sure this neutral creep will die. No, it's going to get away just fine. But Virtus Pro definitely need to do something. Clockwork is not doing anything. Visage is level 6 and is actually going to hit level 7 very, very soon. Meanwhile, Clockwork is still level 2. 
So I think Rare Sport really need to do something, make something happen with sports, but who can they gank as Resolution gonna be in a bit of trouble? Resolution definitely gonna be on the receiving end of a lot of damage. The Hand of God might have been popped a little bit prematurely, but there's really nothing Resolution could have done there as Blink was still on cooldown. And meanwhile, Light of Heaven just one more auto attack away from death. Things are not going well for Virtus Pro whatsoever as their mid lane has died. That's gonna give some nice experience to the Life Store as well as the Storm Spirit. And Storm Spirit with a bit of momentum. Give him an inch and he will take a mile. Yeah, you know, I like what Puppy's doing quite a bit. Just gonna get as much free experience as possible in the lane because, of course, in terms of efficiency, lane creeps Radiant's do mean a bit more experience attack. in the long run than jungle creeps. And of course, Chris Main's is jungle, attack. even though you can spend that frostbite, Radiant's is not that threatening. Meow, Navi, and Versapro are going to do a bit of a tower trade as Versapro already claimed the top tower. And as, has that Sentry Ward in position as God. The only thing that's going well for Virtus Pro is that God is getting a ridiculous amount of free farm. But Clockwork could potentially be in bit of trouble as Golak is going to come through. He's already used Hand of God, so Virtus Pro has to be very, very careful on how they utilize his gank. And Clockwork, he has boots of speed, but he's not even level 3 just yet. So it's going to be a long time before Light of Heaven has any impact. And I mean, I'm not too sure what Clockwork can actually do in this game because. Hookshot into Cogs, not really gonna be too effective against Storm. I guess it's gonna be okay against Crystal Main, but it with flare. it's not looking good for Light of Heaven's impact in this game, as he's just been put in a terrible position overall. Ah. You know, Havost, I'm just gonna scurry on out of there. Let's check out his items really quickly. He picked up that very fast Hannah Minus, he has the phase boots. Luckily, Radiant's gonna pick up the drums. Meow Dendi, not revealing what item he's gonna go for just yet. Uh, I don't think he'll go for fast BKB, he'll likely go for that Orchid to try to shut down the Weaver or the Quap ASAP. You know, Weaver likely gonna rush that Lincoln Sphere to prevent that Orchid coming through. And Kuroki has the Arcane Boots, Darkseer, only a 200 gold away from finishing the mech. So overall, Navi definitely coming out ahead in terms of engagements, but in terms of the late game possibility, if Weaver is allowed to go unchecked, then you might be able to favor Virtus close slightly, although Clockwork and Chen do fall off quite a bit. So I'm not too sure who wins in the late game, but at this pace, Navi should have the mid game firmly in their grasp because of the ridiculously difficult time Light of Heaven is having up on that bottom lane, although he's finally managed to double his level count to level 4, and immediately just going to back away knowing that Havost can potentially just kill him off very easily. But he's going to scout the familiars, and the familiars is going to do a couple pot shots here and there. You know, I'm a bit curious to see what resolution will rush. I mean, fast BKB against Crystal Man as well as Storm Spirit could be very, very useful, but getting an Denied. Orchid against Storm Spirit is also going to be extremely useful. And I'm not too sure what resolution will rush in this case. Usually if you get an Orchid, you want to rush it ASAP, but I don't know if resolution really needs to fear the ganking power of Navi. I mean, of course, there is a Storm Spirit as well as a Frostbite to keep the Crystal Man or to keep the Queen of Pain in pace. But I don't know if that justifies a BKB just yet. You know, Kuroki, probably gonna go for a medallion. Uh, Puppy, just checking out his items, has Smoke Abracer, already level 6. Chen, well, Chen is level 8, and this is just. I am honestly baffled. This does not look like a CIS game. Of course, you know Verse Pro for playing super aggressive, but they played a very defensive lineup. Naturally, Weaver is pretty defensive by nature. Naga is one of the most defensive supports by nature. And Clockwork, not really the most aggressive offlaner either. So, Virtus Pro sort of pigeonhole themselves with their picks. They can't really play super aggressive. But maybe that's what they want. Maybe they want to play a more defensive style against Navi. You know, we're going to see a surge forward by Wex on that top lane. Just going to clear out the creeps with the Iron Shell. And if we took a look at the levels, you can see that Navi does have a firm grasp in the level department, but finally Verispo do have access into that Song of the Siren. Although, do they have enough chain stuns to keep the heroes locked in place? Well, it's going to be a lot more difficult now that the mech's up on Darkseid, because even if they do have enough stuns, a crucial Radiant's timing of that mechanism could attack. preserve the life of a teammate. Now, Navi going to smoke up a boast. Did finish the drums, gonna go for the armlet, and Dendi. 
cards you got delivered towards him. Still not showing what he's going to go for just yet. Maybe he wants to buy an Oblivion Staff right from the get-go. But Navi going to make a movement towards the bottom lane as Dendi's going to break the smoke. And Light Up having good recognition knowing that everybody's missing. Says, I should probably stay all the way back here. And Neil Virtus Pro in response was smoked up, planning ward right here. So both teams just playing some mind games, but this might be the start of a team fight. Although I think Navi definitely gonna be in a better position as this tower. Well, it looks like Virtus Pro just gonna trade once again. Gaia's bottom tower is under attack. Yep, as Navi Radiant's gonna claim the tower, tower a bit sooner. Attack. Although the Chen creeps definitely gonna accelerate VP's push, and looks like the towers are gonna Gaia's fall at almost the same time. Attack. As Goldwack did pick up the last hit, Goldwack will have the mech up relatively soon, as that's going to be some good news for Virtus Pro. But still, Virtus Pro drawing out the game for Weaver to get farmed. Definitely a strong option, as Weaver is going to have a pretty nice timing on the Lincoln's Fair. 110 CS already up on God. But in exchange, Navi going to get another Dyer's tower towards her names, and that is just going to fuel the golden tick by Dendi as well as Vos to a ridiculous amount. And I wouldn't be too surprised to see if Dendi finally buys an Oblivion Staff after this tower has been taken. I can't imagine Dendi really needs to rush a fast BKB in this game, because I mean, what he's really to BKB away from? Naga Neck is not going to stop him. As we're going to see a teleport in, and it's going to get the Song of Siren. Radiant do manage to get the tower, as the Cogs are not properly positioned by Light of Heaven. Here comes Goldback Vacuum, but there is no wall yet up for the Darkseer. Hen of God going to be used, as right now Hobos is just going to work on NS. Does pick up an Infest kill, and is now going to turn his attentions on to Goldback, as the Puppy Paw is going to come in at the wrong time for Virtus Pro as resolution calls for lags. And I don't know, there is a net on the host. He's already used his infest. The birds have 58 damage, couple hits. Yeah, Goldback, if he's hit by the birds, will be dead. So Light of Heaven as well as Weaver should turn their attention on to killing off these familiars at all costs. But if they do that, well, Goldback's dead regardless because Dendi is zipping in with the Storm Spirit. And Darkseer hasn't even used his mech. So this should be an utter steamroll for VP. You could definitely see where they want to go in. They want to sleep and deny the tower and then probably just get the heck out of there. Because Light of Heaven's not even level 6. The cogs definitely weren't in position. As maybe it was just to zone out the other team rather than trap somebody in them. Because again, he's only level 5. And Clockwork level 5 compared to a level 11 life stealer. And even a level 9 Storm Spirit just simply cannot do much. Queen of Pain does have the ultimate and has the Sonic Wave as well, but she's not even level 11 either. So yeah, I think Virtus Pro just wanted to drop the song and then just get the heck out of there. But getting the heck out of there against a Storm Spirit and a Dark Seer is never going to be an easy option whatsoever. So VP, they didn't even get the tower deny, and that might just cost them quite a bit in this very, very decisive mid-game. The best possible outcome would be that Resolution and Weaver escape, and if everybody else dies, then... I mean, that's Dota. What can you do about it? As we're going to see God reconnect. Weaver should be able to get out. Okay, Goldback is definitely dead. He's already his hand of God. Resolution should be able to escape as well as he has that level 3 blink. And, well, I don't think Navi will be keen to pressure too much of their advantage into the tier 2. As Goldback, ooh, Goldback is just gonna barely get away, gets a half the send back as well as Chen gonna kill off the Storm Spirit. Wow, what a play! Just in the blink of an eye, Resolution gonna get the heck out of there. Heavy, lo heavy level of blink is gonna be very, very useful. As Denny with that heart sign, that tactical pause definitely coming out to backfire against Navi. As Denny gonna be understandably a little bit miffed after that engagement, but I mean, you know that happens in Dota especially with unstable servers, or unstable connections. And, well, Denny paid the price in exchange. So Navi, I thought they would have been able to get the kill on Chen, but just one more hit, and Chen would have died, but some good panic usage of abilities by Virtus Pro Match just burst down Denny before he could get that last auto attack off. Sonic Wave was expended, I think Swarm was expended, and Test of Faith was used as well. So a lot of abilities were used to bring down Dendi, and well, Dendi still hasn't picked up an item. 
I don't know if Oblivion Staff would have helped him. Actually, it would have, because that would have given him enough burst damage, or enough attack damage to actually kill off the Chen. So perhaps Denny saving on to his gold for just a bit too long ended up costing him. Although, I don't know if the Oblivion Staff would have been ready, but he's actually going to pick up an ultimate orb, so he's going to go straight into that Hex rather than saving up for that Orchid. So it seems like Denny just going to be playing for a li little bit more of the late game rather than going for that extremely gank-heavy build. But May recognizes Virtus Pro does have a very defensive lineup, so going for solo ganks with the Lifestore might not always be the best option against VP's team. Especially since Weaver is already so close to his own Lincoln Sphere. So in retrospect, I do like this sort of change in tactics by Dendi, although I do kind of wish that he actually picked up an item before he went on that engagement, otherwise he would have definitely been able to kill, kill off Chen. Still, VP definitely dodged a bullet. They only escaped, or they only had one casualty in that gauge, which was Naga Siren. Queen of Pain gonna get very close to that level 11 as she already has two components towards that BKV. Weaver gonna have the Lincoln Sphere finish in about 220 gold or so. You know, Chen has the mechanism finished and also has access into the Hand of God once again, Light of Heaven, almost level 7. But I'm really questioning how Clockwork can actually have impact in this game other than just hopefully isolating Lifestealer. But we're gonna have to see as Havost finishing the armor, I'm gonna go straight into the Basher. Not gonna go for the Super Race Card S and Y belt. Instead, just looking to get as much lockdown as possible. And I think against a Lincoln Sphere Weaver as well as the Queen of Pain, having a Basher attack. is gonna be very useful. I mean, <laughs> you're a life stealer and having high move speed is gonna be very useful, but there's only so much move speed you can have up against the likes of Weaver as well as Queen of Pain. So going for the fast Basher might be the best option in this situation. As I don't think Navi are clearly intending to finish the game ASAP, so he's not going to go for the AC. I think they want to fight a bit more, and having abilities to lock down Queen of Pain as well as locking down the Weaver definitely going to be of the utmost important towards the TI3 runner ups. Meanwhile, and Song of the Siren going to be used just to hopefully kill off the Roshan as the Visage Familiars were in position. As looks like, will Virtus Pro actually go on the offensive? Looks like Virtus Pro are in a bit of an indecisive fashion. Dendi gonna zip all the way up onto the high ground. Mechanism already gonna use by Virtus Pro as Light of Heaven with a nice cogs to isolate the rest of VP. But a beautiful vacuum by Wex. Sonic Wave gonna be expended. Hand of God gonna be used as well. Golwak gonna be the first one to perish in this engagement. NS gonna die to the freezing field as well as the Lystar damage. But we were gonna get a response kill on Dendi as it's gonna be a one for three thus far. Darkster does manage to kill off the Queen of Pain as we were still trying to go in. Can he actually finish off the Crystal Main? He might lose his Aegis in the process. He will kill off the Crystal Main, but here comes Vost. The Aegis is still online. He wants to kill off Kuroki, but does he want to lose the Aegis in exchange? He is going to lose the Aegis in exchange. God going to pick up a triple kill. So when everything is said and done, it's going to be a 3 for 3? Three? 3 for 3 as Light of Heaven. Did he buy back? He did not, so it's going to be a 3 for 3, and Weaver did not use the Aegis. So, that was almost dead even. Both offlanes survived, both supports died, both mid lanes died, and both carries survived. That was actually the most even fight. But I think you've got a fair VP slightly, because Storm Spirit died almost at the onset, and Weaver was able to pick up a triple kill, which is going to increase his damage output by a tremendous amount after getting that much gold. So Virtus Pro gonna definitely come out in the advantage and also very fortunate for VP is that <laughs> that familiars were just not able to get enough right click damage off onto Weaver to even trigger his Aegis. So VP definitely looking pretty strong. The only thing I'm a bit worried about is that the Clockwork and the Naga are really just not having an impact. Naga, all she's doing is casting Song of the Siren, hopefully nang the Light Stirrer, and then just dying. Which is all well and good, but <laughs> you're gonna have to have a bigger impact as this game goes on if you are a Naga Siren. Checking out the uh, goal graph, you can see Navi do have an advantage, but that could be largely because of their additional towers they have claimed thus far. You can see that Virtus Pro have only claimed two towers, whereas Navi have claimed four. Yes, indeed, I can count. And the experience graph definitely going to be a, a bit more telling on how this game is actually progressing, as the experience graph is slightly in favor of Navi due to their high level supports, but again, Weaver getting a triple kill. Not going to look good for Navi as this game goes on, as he is going to likely pick up... I don't know, will he pick up a Demon Edge? 
Will you go for maybe some evasion? Go for the butterfly against the bashes of the light store? I'm not too sure. As Darkster is going to pursue the issue, and we're going to see a storm spirit bomb coming in. As here comes a vacuum. Is there a wall? The wall is not going to be dropped because Darkster is going to die at the immediate beginning of the fight. God taking light edge from Havos, but his rage is timing out. God could potentially be in a lot of tr or Havos is going to potentially be in a lot of trouble. Now his rage is out. 17 second cooldown is. Quite a long time, and Havos likely gonna perish. Yes, Havos indeed will die. Clockwork actually gonna get himself stuck in the trees as Sook was just simply off the mark. And we're gonna see God keep on the pursuit. Crystal Man gonna drop one last remnant of the ultimate, and actually NS gonna burn a level one ultimate to try to kill off Kuroki. But we'll see if this is actually worth it in the end, as that ultimate will not be online for another 170 seconds. But Goldback gonna pick up another kill, and Versus Pro just steamrolling Navi in these team fights. Man Gage is definitely not to Navi's liking. I think they're really counting on the wall to disrupt a lot of Navi's or a lot of Versus Pro's momentum in a team fight. But Versus Pro utilizing their mobility as well as their wall of chain creeps and their immense amount of burst damage just simply destroyed the Darkseer before he could even cast the wall. And Darkseer recognizing how important he is in a team fight. Not only to get off that wall, but also to pop that mecha. Gonna pick up a very smart Ghost Scepter. Still, the damage has been done. Invertus Pro definitely gonna be in a pretty significant advantage. VP, they did. Wow, they didn't even use the Aegis. But the Aegis is gonna time out very, very soon. So, there is something going slightly in Navi's favor. But, something going even further in VP's favor is that now Weaver has a Desolator. And that means Lifestore can't really survive as much as he previously hoped to. Especially since he went for a more offensive Basher build rather than a more defensive AC build. So I'm a bit scared for most in these team fights. But Navi won't be facing an Aegis Weaver anymore. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. You know, Light of Heaven, gonna pick up the Ogre Club. Uh, I think he's going to go for his own BKB. I don't know if this is an Aghanim Scepter Rush. A lot of Clockworks will Bulba, especially do like to get that BKB up on the Clockwork, just so he can survive. And again, Storm Spirit, the majority of his damage is magical. And of course, being able to withstand the Soul Assumption as well as the Vacuum and the Frostbite and the Crystal Main damage. But he's very useful for Clock, even though he doesn't do that much damage. Just being able to survive and cause Havoc is pretty much all Clockwork can hope for. And Navi making a smart maneuver, gonna go for a tower trade, but VP just pushing down towers simply too quickly. And they're gonna use the last remnants of the Aegis, Navi gonna be in a lot of trouble, can actually defend against this push. They are gonna be facing Hand of God, although the Aegis is gonna time out relatively soon. The question is how deep will God go for this tower? As well, his age is gonna time out in a matter of seconds. Can he actually clean up this tower or will he die? He has to be very careful. He's gonna be forced to use time lapse. He will use the time lapse as his age is still online. I don't know if using that would have been the best choice. It's most going in. NS just getting bashed into oblivion. Here comes the vacuum. Where's the wall? There's the wall. Mechanism gonna use this wall. Hand of God gonna be popped by go back. Darks are gonna be picked off as Deddy taking a lot of damage resolution as well as Light of Heaven. Just taking way too much. Go back will be the next one to perish. This guy is just gonna get the heck out of there. And you see the perils of fighting against the Dark Center choke point. Well, that just wasn't pretty. Although I'm not gonna lie, Hobos got a lot of bashes on NS. That was very unlucky for the former Virtus Pro captain, as he just got bashed over and over again. But still, damage has been done. The tier three did die. As, ooh, a rebuttal kill being picked up on Light of Heaven. Clockwork just not in good time. These hooks are not very impressive by Light of Heaven, but again, I don't know how much Clockwork can actually do in this game, to be quite frank. Dendi picked up the hex just recently. Looks like he used it on Light of Heaven for that kill. You know, Resolution gonna be very close to fishing his own scythe of ice. Naga Siren gonna go for the very standard Heaven's Halberd build. Chen has the Vlad's finished. He had it for quite a while already. You know, God has used a lot of his gold. What will he pick up next? It's gonna be a Reaver, so he wants to get as tanky as possible, which I think is the correct choice against the immense damage output because without a Reaver, all of us needs is one or two bashes and Weaver's dead. 
with the Reaver, Invisible. unless it needs two or three, and the additional damage of Storm Spirit to finish up the kill on the Weaver. Meanwhile, Havos getting very close to that Abyssal Blade. Puppy has a Ghost Scepter himself, as Navi is just rolling in the gold. Uh, checking out the items on Kuroki. He's fished the medallion. He fished it quite a while ago. As Darks here. Well, he's been dying, so his item progression has slowed down very, very precipitously. Although, I don't know if that's actually the right word. And you can see the gold graph. Still favoring Virtus Pro ever so slightly, but that last team, almost team wiped by Navi, going to make themselves have a slightly higher experience edge when everything is said and done. And you can see the limitations of an underleveled clockwork. What can he do? He drops the hook, or he misses the hook, which Live Evan has been seeming to do in these games. Drops the cogs, and he dies. Because that's all Clockwork can do. I mean, I think Clockwork is a fine hero. I just don't know if he actually does anything against Darkseer, against Lifestealer, against Storm Spirit. He does well against Crystal Mane. Not so well against Visage, because Visage and Nukes have very long range. And you can, of course, use the fillers even after you are trapped in the cogs. So, I don't know. This is just not a good Clockwork game. But Light of Heaven has definitely not been making things easier for himself, as he has whiffed a couple of hooks. Still, VP definitely in a decent position. Their Weaver is getting very, very farmed. And if we check out the net worth, you can see Weaver is actually ahead of the Lystor, despite Lystor picking up a very, very quick hand of Midas. But now Lystor has the Abyssal Blade. So that's going to be another extra bit of lockdown. If they can manage to lock down the Chen, there goes so much of our disposed team fight potential out of the window. Because that Hand of God, as well as the mechanism, 450 points of healing, or 550 points of healing, rather, is just way too much to be ignored, as it looks like Resolution did unfortunately die for himself, utilizing that display to the fullest, as we're going to see an incredible zip. Here comes the Abyssal, here comes the Hex, as that was a very easy kill for the Navi friends. So Danny is actually going to go back into a BKV, an interesting decision. Maybe anticipating the Queen of Pain Hex, but really, what will BKB do? It won't do anything against Net. It won't do anything against Weaver. Well, Kuroki could potentially be in a bit of trouble, as Kuroki going to pop the Grave Chill, and we'll get on out of there. So, a nice usage of that Grave Chill to get a, get the heck away from Weaver by Kuroki. Now, good micro by Kuroki is going to keep the familiars in a appropriate position so that they will spot out any Roshan attempts, and I severely doubt Virtus Pro will go for that Roshan without Queen of Pain being alive. But back to what I was saying, if they can manage to lock down Goldback, 550 points of healing, as well as a nice bit of burst damage from the Test of Faith, and of course the creeps, will mean a lot of Virtus Pro's teamfight potential has been eliminated completely, so I expect Chen to be the primary focus in these battles if they can't manage to get perfect chainstone off of into the Weaver. No, Havos, now that he's finished the Abyssal Blade, likely going to go for an AC, so the armor will be buffed up. And if you look at Virtus Pro's line, Riptide does minus armor, Desolator does minus armor, Swarm does minus armor. That is a lot of minus armor coming through. As Dendi, going to go back into the BKB, has the gem. Weaver now finished the heart, so having the heart of Churrasque online means that, well, you kind of have to focus the Chen or the Naga Siren rather than focusing the Weaver, because otherwise Weaver will just time-lapse, and there goes your usage of Abyssal Blade as well as Hex, as Navi definitely do not want to be throwing those usages away. Dendi getting pretty close to finishing his own BKB, as Havos going in on this tower will not... No, it is in deny range, so Virtus Pro likely going to get the tower denied. The question is, how deeply do Navi want to engage for it? They're just going to let the tower be denied as Navi. All they really want to do is get rid of that tower because now they know if they can manage to push out the lanes. Virtus Pro don't have an easy access into the Roshan. The dire Roshan advantage will be completely removed from the most part. And that's why you see VP immediately going to the smoke because they know if they stand around waiting, Navi will just send out. Storm, as well as Lifestealer, or maybe Darkseer, to push out this lane, push out the middle lane, and then go in for Roshan themselves. And that's why VP is going in right now, as an unfortunate bash on the G is going to prevent him from doing too much physical damage. 
Meal Al Dendi gonna pop the Remnants, Crystal Main gonna pop the Nova, as this is gonna be a very tense engagement. Clockwork trying to get in position for Hook, but who can he hook? Dendi is being infested by Havost. Likely he wants to try to hook the Visage, if at all possible, or the Darkseer probably is a better option. Speaking of Darkseer, still has the same items. Usually at this point, Darkseer wants to go for either Blink Dagger or BKB. And I don't know if BKB is necessarily a good choice, as Kuroki is going to get the familiar slaughtered. And it's still on cooldown, so there goes a lot of potential DPS from Navi right there. So, Virtus Pro, going to be <laughs> Light of Heaven. I don't know if these... I don't know if this is necessarily Light of Heaven's fault. It's, pro it's his fault because he's not communicating with this team. But May said, alright, Weaver, move. And then he just missed the hook. But if he managed to get the hook onto Kuroki, that was a definitely a dead visage. So miscommunication by both Weaver as well as Light of Heaven. Definitely going to be the downfall of Virtus Pro. At least in that particular moment. As Queen of Pain has now finished the Hex. And you can see these lanes. All Navi need to do is send one person down, but they don't have anything like a Nature's Prophet. And they don't have a Keeper of the Light either, so they have to sort of devote themselves fully. Otherwise, they could be in danger of getting themselves caught out by a 5v4 Song of Siren initiation. As Smoker Seed gonna be used, and Nobby, I don't know if the familiar spotted it. I think it was slightly outside the vision. No, they didn't spot it. As here comes the engagement. Here comes Storzbear as well as Leicester. As they're going to get the mechanism off. Visage going to be the first one to die. Here comes the wall. Resolution going to be the next one to die. Didn't get his ultimate off. Light of Heaven going to die as well. Hand of God going to be used as God is going to take so much damage. And so far, Navi definitely coming out ahead. And you can see right now, VP are pinched off by the wall. First hit bash by Hobos. No. No such luck. But Virtus Pro definitely came out at the disadvantage. The only bright spot is that BKB was not used by Queen of Pain, but in exchange, Navi gonna find themselves a Roshan and Age of Immortal up on the Life Stealer. So, a really, really weird engagement by Virtus Pro, as you could definitely see where they came from, but you saw the position. Storm Spirit just zipped in, bypassed any sort of blockage by the side of Navi, and ooh, Abyssal is going to be used by God, but they don't have any detection. Oh, that's unfortunate because that Abyssal will be down for the next minute, and that could be the minute that not or Virtus Pro needs to get themselves into fighting shape, because Queen of Pain will be back on with that Scythe of Ice as well as the Sonic Wave, and we'll see how Navi want to approach this next couple of seconds as God could potentially be in a bit of trouble. The familiar getting picked up once again. Here comes Hex onto God. As here comes the hook onto Puppy as well as Denny. A good hook by Light of Heaven. As they manage to kill off Storm Spirit almost immediately. But Resolution taking way too much damage in exchange. Puppy getting the next one and die. Light of Heaven with the Barry Salt is going to secure a kill. And now Havos looking for a kill. Trying to get the bashes off into NS to prevent the net. As he's going to get the Abyssal off onto NS. NS will just barely be able to escape. And Navi going to lose his agent massively. <laughs> As Navi, they shouldn't have taken the fight without the wall, but I think they knew if they backed off, they would have given the Aegis away from Virtus Pro since Queen of Pain was respawning. And the Visage familiar is just being absolute food, as we were going to pick up the Aegis Immortal and a familiar for his troubles. And now it's safe to say Virtus Pro have a massive advantage, as they are looking very, very strong. The only thing that Virtus Pro have not shown themselves able to do is to get themselves a good fight when Wall of Illusion, or Wall of Replica, is up. But Storm Spirit, BKB, Scythe was used, just simply not enough, as Virtus Pro were able to get the successful engagement off. And the question is, can Navi defend their bottom barracks? Havos does have buyback. You will likely have to use it, unless... There is a beautiful vacuum wall set up. Is there a Blink Dagger up on the Darks here? He does not have a Blink Dagger, so he won't be able to get into position that easily for a vacuum wall combination. He just has to run in and Radiant hope that his luck will be good enough. As Havos will respawn, but the Rax will die before Havos actually respawns. I don't know if Havos not buying back is the best option. Maybe he thinks like if he bought back and he died, then the game would have been over. But here comes the engagement. Song is going to be used. But that means God... Oh, nice. You... Nice sort of juke by NS as he popped the song and then walked away from the side of Navi. Just allowed God to go back in as BKB can be used by Resolution. Gonna get the immediate kill off on the Darkseer. 
looks like BKB not going to be complete necessary, but still a good engagement as Redis Pro want to get back on the offensive. Nice hookshot by Light of Heaven onto Kuroki as Light of Heaven's taking way too much damage. Gawa going to pop them. Ghost Scepter has got taken a lot of damage. Who got sent back home? It looks like it was Resolution as Light of Heaven going to be in a bit of trouble. God taking so much damage. Replica, Abyssal Blade, all going to be used as Go Black taking way too much. He's going to die as Light of Heaven as well as the rest of Virtus Pro looking to retreat. They will be able to skip successfully. NS will be able to get on another Chen for a Visage as well as a Barracks. Definitely going to be a good trade. Radiance bottom barracks are under attack. And Virtus Pro is definitely looking in a very strong position as this game goes on. As the experience graph almost even Radiance because the kill count pretty attack. even as well. Gold graph slightly in favor of Virtus Pro. But now Virtus Pro have claimed themselves the first set of barracks in the game. But keep in mind, that barracks came just because Darkseer pretty much just... Well, it wasn't... The barracks died before Darkseer charged in. But that team fight broke out because Darkseer just charged in and, I guess, died. Although he did buy back in wall, so... I don't know. That was just a weird engagement overall. So, checking out Avos item still has the Abyssal up. Again, likely gonna go for the AC as Smoke to Seek can be used by Navi. And the question is, will Virtus Pro be caught off guard? They don't have the Sock and Siren to bail him out, although they will have it very soon. They have the gem up on the Naga. Keep in mind, Dendi did previously buy a gem. He still has a gem. Is this VP's gem? Or is it Puppy's gem? It is Puppy's gem, so. Puppy forced to spend a lot of gold on gems, but he pretty much has everything he can hope for. He has a Ghost Scepter. He has a bit of extra HP. 1440 HP on a Crystal Main. Definitely not too shabby. But now Weaver is starting to go for those big items. Once he picks up the Butterfly, he can't really rely on those bashes anymore. And Avos might have to make a choice. Will he go for MKB or will he go for Assault Curse? As he is going to pick up the Hyperstone. And that means he will go for the AC, but won't really be able to rely on those bashes anymore. And I think Weaver, once he picks up the butterfly, all he needs is either a BKB or maybe an MKB, and he will just be an absolute monster on the map to deal with. Not that he isn't already a monster, he'll just be almost unable to be stopped. Aegis still has around a minute and a half online as first pro gonna group up. Chen gonna go for the Aghanim Scepter. You know, any item progression on resolution? No, not at all. And you can see the minus armor from Weaver just ticking in. Frostbite can be used just to dispel the Lincolns. But God just gonna go in for a couple pot shots here and there. He knows he has the Aegis, he knows he has time lapse. Again, Weaver, very, very pesky to deal with. And that tier 3 tower definitely gonna die. The question is, can Navi get denied? Here comes Zippin by Dendi as well as Havos. As the Song of Siren can be used to try to isolate off Havos. They are gonna get the bashes off on Go Out, Go Out, gonna pop the Ghost Scepter. He's gonna pop the Hand of God. They are gonna kill off Havos. Here comes Dendi. Wall vacuum gonna be used, catching the majority of VP. Storm Spirit gonna pick off Shen. As Mio and Puppy gonna run around Ghost Scepter. God forced to use the time lapse. The Age is gonna time out relatively soon. Light Heaven trying to get in position. Does get the hook shot as well as Cogs off. They kill off the Visage. But the Fiddler is still doing work. God still chasing, but Darks just simply too hard to catch up and God simply left out by his lonesome as Weaver forced to skull on out of there. No more ages. Radiance middle barracks are under attack. And that means Navi managed to get off a successful defense as they fought that fight without Havos, who was forced to use buyback. Still good focus fire by Dendi and good usage of or good focus fire by Navi to try to kill off the Chen, who again is one of the most important targets. As I don't know if he used the mech, he definitely used Hand of God. And now, VP, they wanted to try to end the game off that Aegis, but now the Aegis is gonna time out, and the question is will they be able to get off another flawless Roshan engagement, or will they encounter a bit more resistance from the Saiyan Navi? As that Aegis pretty much meant that God could do whatever he wants, but now he's gonna have to be a bit careful as now he has to start saving for buy and all that jazz as he is approaching his item slot limit. But still, you can definitely be assured Virtus Pro still have a heavy advantage. Although if you look at the experience graph, it's almost dead even. Golograph only ever so slightly in favor of Virtus Pro and at 
40 minutes in the game. 5k gold difference means absolutely nothing. It just relies on execution. As Live Heaven's starting to hit his hooks, which is very good news for Virtus Pro, but now you can see once Weaver, or once Weaver and Quap use their. Well, once Quap unloads the majority of her arsenal, how will VP kill anything when Navi pop their Ghost Scepters? Because after Quap uses all her stuff, VP doesn't do damage outside Weaver, and that's why everybody's picking up a Ghost Scepter. So the name of the name name of the game for Navi is Mass Ghost Scepters, as Mo Ghost Scepters less problems it is going to be Navi's motto in this game. Pain without consequence. You know, for Navi, you can see that Boom, there he Naga Siren's starting to withstand the initial barrage, and that means the nets are off on Havost, and they can't. Navi can't really win every single fight without Havost like they have been doing. Although in the last fight, Havost did buy back, so this Naga is starting to become a pretty big problem for Navi, as now that Naga Siren is approaching that minute-long cooldown, and Naga Siren, of course, has very nice armor, has that Heaven's Halberd. And it's starting to become a very big problem for Havos because he just dropped the Song of Siren while Havos is raged up, dropped the net, and then they just kill off Life Stars super easily. So, both teams have their problems, but right now Virtus Pro definitely in the advantage because their Weaver is just looking way too powerful at this stage. So another smoke to see can it be used. I don't know if the clockwork rocket did spot out. I don't think it did. As Navi looking to get off an engagement, but right now they are fighting without any vision. As Dendi still has a gem, and Dendi is gonna go for the Shiva's guard to buff up his armor. But Vimal Virus Pro just gonna do some team ancienting as Navi just simply cannot find VP at this stage. He's and VP, they know what Navi's doing. They're like, wait. Why aren't Navi defending their freaking middle barracks and their tier 4s? Let's just stay together and go on to a high ground position where it's difficult to fight us. And Navi sort of forced to back off. They have to respect the power of creeps pushing in on their buildings as well as pushing into their tier 4s. And that means VP can get into a better position and try to take down the next Roshan. Because if they can manage to get Aegis as well as Cheese off, even if they pop the Ghost Scepters, they still have to deal with Quap dealing even more damage with those screen pains. So I wouldn't be too surprised to see if uh, Resolution act actually picked up the Aegis and God picked up the Cheese. Bit surprised to see that Naga Siren is picking up a Staff of Wizardry, going to go for a 4 Staff rather than something like uh, something more of a semi-carry build, whether it be a Diffusal Blade or a Mantis style, because Having a Diffuse Blade against all these Ghost Scepters is definitely going to be a huge boon for Virtus Pro. So I am questioning NS's logic by quite a bit. But still, having a Force Staff against the likes of Lifestealer are definitely going to be very, very useful as well. So both of them have the trade offs, but considering the amount of Ghost Scepters on Sai and Avi, if I were in NS's shoes, I'd go for a Diffuse Blade myself. And of course, as soon as I say the amount of Ghost Scepters on Navi, I realize that they only actually have two. But one of them is a very important target, which is that Darkseer. As we're spoken, to clean up the, the Roshan in a matter of instance, as Weaver is going to pick himself attack. up in Aegis of the Immortal. Meanwhile, Quap decide to claim the cheese in response. And it looks like Queen of Pain is going to go for a Lincoln Sphere. Or a Scotty. Probably a Lincoln's. As he wants to survive the Storm Sphere initial hex before he can pop off the BKB, I guess. You know, smart play by Navi, they're only revealing Dendi on the bottom lane because they know Virtus Pro won't engage upon Dendi and they know Lifestar is likely in Dendi so they can't engage upon Dendi regardless of the situation. But 4 staff has now been finished. God has the Aegis in 4.1k gold so essentially he has technically 4 lives if he Uses Aegis, uses time lapse, dies, and then buys back. So technically four lives. 
as God going to take a bit of damage. Not going to be too threatened by it thus far, although he is at three quarters HP. Light of Heaven going to miss the hook. Here comes the vacuum as well as the wall, perfectly placed by Wex. As here comes the hand of God going to be used. Queen of Pain going to be the first one to die. He's going to actually buy it back as Light of Heaven is going to be the second one to perish. That Song of Siren did absolutely nothing as the majority of Navi were just in a very, very good position. And actually, the cogs going to work slightly against Rose Pro as a complete and utter massacre for the Russians. Gonna mean that God is gonna lose his Aegis as well as his life, and he is gonna give up a huge streak, albeit to the Crystal Main. And now, Virtus Pro definitely gonna be feeling a bit concerned at how that fight went. That Naga Siren Ultimate did absolutely nothing. I think either NS popped it before Avos could actually rage, so Avos actually just fell asleep, or the rage wore off during the duration of that and Havos fell asleep. Either way, that sleep did nothing and the vacuum mob once again was in a beautifully or a beautiful position by the forces of Navi as this Darkseer is starting to go to work. Gonna pick up the Shivas guard as double Shiv is coming through for Navi as they want to have that immense amount of burst damage coming in and I don't know if VP have enough to take in, take down Navi at this stage unless they manage to get off of beautiful team fight and well we're gonna have to see if that actually happens because a nice hook initiation coming in from light of heaven but Avos is just gonna rage through the sonic wave four staff away by ns gonna preserve light of heaven's life and Avos is dead so a good start for the team fight thus, thus far and they will just barely oh man so close to kill off the dark if they kill off the dark right there well he would have had buyback so that wouldn't have mattered too much still that would have forced him to have buyback and that would have meant he wouldn't have the shiva's guard but now he does have the Shiva's Guard online, and Avos himself has buybacks, so... I don't know if Virtus Pro can actually make the most of this Lifestealer kill, as now they're going to be fighting without an Aegis up on the Weaver, and Weaver has already used his buyback. As he has just bought something, I think that's an Ultimate Orb? Or a Yasha? I'm going to buy a Crystal, so I'm going to go for that Daedalus. But, Virtus Pro going to start to go to work, Lifestar going to buy back, his mechanism is going to be used, and that is going to be the immediate retreat by Virtus Pro. All they wanted was a Havos buyback, and they got it. And now they're going to back off in response. Still, you got to say, game slightly in favor of Virtus Pro, although Virtus Pro really have nothing for the Darkseer wall combination, because their heroes tend to clump up. Naga is melee, Weaver has short range, and Clockwork is melee. And Queen of Pain is just getting isolated by the Abyssal Blade and just getting absolutely sorry. And that's got to be why the Lincoln Sphere is going to be picked up by Queen of Pain because she is really scared of that Abyssal Blade. You know, Weaver doesn't have buyback. Hitting very, very hard, but again, Ghost Scepter is going to mitigate some of that damage. Storm's going to zip around, going to mitigate more of that damage. Really needs to kill off Havos, but. Easier said than done, as Havost, his item progression has slowed to an absolute crawl because of the buybacks, but still he's doing whatever he can to make the most of his usage. And Milan NS, not too sure what he's going to go for at this stage. Already has the Force Staff. Will he go for some like Ghost Scepter himself? We'll find out. I gotta assume NS will go for Ghost Scepter because Meister is just going in and raging and killing off the Naga Siren whenever possible. You know, Chen getting very close to his own Aghanim Scepter, so that 30 second cooldown of the ultimate, if a team fight should last more than 30 seconds and Chen's not dead, that extra bit of healing coming in from Hand of God is going to be super useful. 400 points of healing every 30 seconds, definitely nothing to underestimate. And Chris Main picks up a Halberd, so there goes another source of Weaver auto attacking. It might be prudent for Weaver to actually get rid of an item and pick up a BKB because right now Lincoln's definitely can't block off every single spell in the book. Still Virtus Pro doing a nice job retaining map control. Still have a slight gold advantage, experience advantage ever so slightly in favor of Navi so right now it's definitely, definitely too difficult to tell who actually has a solid advantage although you gotta say Virtus Pro have the advantage just because well more buildings are dead on the side of Navi. You know, Queen of Pain gonna finally finish the Lincoln Sphere NS. Gonna pick up a VIP booster, so looks like he's trying to preserve his life. 
rather than going for a Ghost Scepter. And I guess that makes sense against Visage as well as Storm Spirit having X Spread of Life rather than having that 30% magic damage boost is going to be more important rather than f that physical attack immunity as Verse Pro going to smoke up. This could be the climactic team fight as both teams in a very tenuous position, but Navi clearly feeling the pressure a bit more. Is the Remnant going to pop? They're going to focus down Denny, or as they are going to try to do as much as they can. Denny is going to pop the BKB. The wall, the vacuum, the shivas, all on point. Ridiculous amount of damage coming through from Navi against Virtus Pro. They are going to kill off the Chen. They are going to kill off the Queen of Pain, and God is just trying to do uh, whatever he can. Light of Heaven going to be the next one to fall. Looks like Puppy going to pop the Ghost Scepter. God going to be the next one to die. Song of Siren just coming in. The Familiars. Oh man, that time lapse coming in for the nick of time. Clutch play by NS coming in with that Song of Siren. Will he pay for it with his life? I don't know, but something that's going to pay for Virtus Pro's lapse of control in that team fight is going to be their base as Queen of Pain definitely does not have buyback. Shen will not buy back Clockwork. Even if he does back, what can he honestly do? This will be two sets of racks for Navi, unless they want to push into the base. But they're likely just going to kill off the mid barracks as well as the bottom barracks and then get the heck out of there. So, what went wrong for Virtus Pro? Obviously, they couldn't kill off the storm. Was focusing the storm the best idea? I don't know. They had to have known Leicester was inside of him. But I guess the first target they did see was the storm. They didn't see anybody else. And they just decided to go on the initiate or on the offensive as God actually went for a base trade and he's gonna pay for it with his life. He picked off a tier four, but he traded for his life, and that is gonna be a trade that now he's gonna take any day of the week. And more importantly, Weaver doesn't have buyback, but I don't know if Nami knows this. Well, they should know he's dead for next 20 seconds. I'm sure they wrote down the wrote down the buyback to timer for Weaver. But may they figure they can't actually get in position to punish Virtus Pro for God's over aggressive play. But still, Virtus Pro got something at the very least. So once again, you saw the problem in just in the span of a hex. Virtus Pro don't have enough damage to kill off the storm. If Weaver got a couple yeah, crits, maybe, but Weaver was, I think, focused by Havost, so... Once Weaver is not doing damage, Virus Pro don't actually have damage. <laughs> and this is the problem with our lineup. It's just a very, very defensive lineup by nature. And once they're challenged, Radiant's it's not looking good, as now Virus Pro going to feel the effects of Weaver dying as they are going to give up their bottom Dyer's barracks bottom and they attack. might give up Roshan control Dyer's as a response as again Radiant's another problem for Virtus Pro in that team fight is what that they fought in the choke Dyer's point obviously Dyer's Navi intended for it, Storm to be caught off there or if Storm was to be caught it would Radiant's be caught out over there Dyer's when there is a choke point where Dark's here fallen. and the double Shivas could definitely go to work so now Navi in a very, very commanding position. They claim two sets of barracks. They're winning team fights. They still have wall. They have buyback up on Havost. Well, they will have buyback up on Havost. But Virtus Pro, they will have Roshan control up relatively soon. The only problem is that, ooh, actually we might be able to get, bit, uh, get buyback before this Roshan fight does break out. So, if he gets enough for buyback, even if he dies, he can time lapse and get himself right back into the fight. But it looks like Virtus Pro just gonna clean it up without any sort of response by Navi. An interesting maneuver by Navi, but I guess they just simply You're weren't able to challenge it. So, Queen of Pain gonna get an Aegis, and you're seeing the problem with Queen of Pain. Once you just cap off in your items, you just simply can't do enough against the forces of Lysteel or Storm Spare and Darkseer. As, who picked up the cheese? Looks like Clock picked up the cheese, so probably gonna survive as long as possible, then hopefully get a cheese transfer off onto either the Queen of Pain or maybe even the Chen. Having a double Hand of God could be very useful for Virtus Pro. Man, my voice is dying. It really has been a while since I've casted. As Kuroki going to get initiated on Hookshot, going to be used as there aren't any four staffs for Navi. Good initiation thus far, but Kuroki going to be sent to sleep. Havost 
gonna be kited away. But right now, using that sleep without any kills and without any focus on most, definitely not gonna be good for the side of Virtus Pro as here comes the first Shivas vacuum wall. Second Shivas wasn't already used. There it goes. And there it goes. The forces of Virtus Pro, they kill off Chen, they won't have access into the double hand of God. Lystar gonna finish off the clockwork, and meanwhile Queen of Pain and Weaver cannot do anything except get the heck out of there. Now it's Navi using their superior maneuverability, and when you have a storm you will always have better maneuverability compared to Virtus Pro. But I think the biggest problem is just damage. Once Darkseer pops the Ghost Scepter, he's pretty much invulnerable. He definitely won't be able to be killed by the Queen of Pain. And that means you can't focus Darkseer because <laughs> he's just going to pop the Ghost Scepter and there goes a lot of focus fire. Dyer's top tower is so things attack. not looking good for Virtus Pro whatsoever. At the very least, they will have top Chen tower Clockwork responding very, very soon. And that means they will be able to preserve their top barracks for now. And they also didn't use the Aegis, nor did they use the... No, they did use the Dyer's cheese. Clockwork did use the cheese. Attack. Try to preserve his life for as long as possible. But the tier 3 tower definitely going to fall. Goldblatt going to find himself great shield. But Hobos just simply does not care. Going to go in for the barracks. As Hobos going to find himself Heaven's Halberd. Going to get himself netted up as well. He's probably going to die. This could be the start of an opening for Virtus Pro. Looks like there is an infest going down onto a creep. Hobos going to pop right back out. But is at a very, very low HP. First hand of God coming through. Will Virtus Pro be able to survive for the next 30 seconds? No. Goldblatt going to be the next one to die. As Light of Heaven going to get sent right back home. God going to die. He's going to buy back. Can he get himself right back into the fight? Yes, Shikuchi, of course. Get himself right back in the fight. He's freaking Weaver as Resolution taking way too much edge. He is going to be forced to use Aegis, but here comes G. If G dies right here, that will be the end of Virtus Pro, but Nami just simply do not have enough gas in the tank to withstand G's physical damage output. Then you're going to buy himself right back on out of there, and that means the top lane will be preserved for now. The question is, did Havos die? I think he did, and that means he's buyback, so the next team fight going to mean absolutely everything. But considering how these last team fights have gone, you've got to be favoring Navi Dyer's by quite a bit as the player is going to give himself a nice set of falling. range barracks for their troubles and they're actually going to escape as well. So good job. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. The question is, will Virtus.pro force the issue? I think they have to. They can't fight against a double lifester of buyback anymore because for, they'll just go in for the base. But these familiars are going in, shipping with the buildings, then going back out renewing the damage uh, there's nothing very Pro can do about this so right now the cards are definitely in Navi's hands as you can see the experience graph heavily faring Navi the goal graph still almost even and if we look at the levels you can see across the board well they are faring Navi by quite a bit but everybody's over level 16 as this is turning to be a very tense game but again the usefulness of Queen of Pain has ended. It's pretty much just Weaver. And Weaver can't do everything by himself. And I think it might be time for NS to pick up some sort of DPS item, whether it be a Yasha or a Diffusal Blade. He just simply has to do something so that Weaver can clean up the fights. And I think Diffusal Blade would be a good option. But I don't know. NS looks like he's saving for buyback as well. So, I'm not too sure what Virtus Pro can do about this. Now, Visage has finished the Aghanim. going to summon those triple familiars. So, now they have an additional disabled on their hands. And, looks like Virtus Pro going to push the issue. You know, Navi, interesting enough, they're going to go on the offensive. They don't have buyback on Lystor, and they don't have buyback on Storm either. So this could be the team fight that decides it all. As the creep wave definitely not favoring one team or another, as both teams, or one team at the very least, is smoked up. And that is Virtus Pro as they're looking for an angle. But Navi just simply going to bypass them, go on the top lane, forcing Virtus Pro to commit. As it might be a base trade, as Virtus Pro, are they going to go for the back door? Or are they going to teleport on out of there. Looks like they will back off because they know Navi just have a bit too much in the tank in terms of 
pushing considering the creep wave advantage that they currently have. Dyer's top barracks are under attack. But Navi, are they expecting this wraparound smoke gank? Well, they see Light of Heaven revealing himself with the rocket. Dandy gonna initiate. Looks like Light of Heaven gonna whiff the hook as he just simply cannot catch Dandy. And here comes the Sonic Wave, gonna be extended. Hobo's going in, will kill off the Cogger vacuum wall. Shivers, 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 shivers. And that is gonna be an ultra kill for Wex, the standard darks here. GG, well played. And that was some nice door to the behold. As I can't say. Either team necessarily played badly. I think in the end it just came down to Burst Pro's picks biting them in the ass. Outside of Weaver, there was just simply no damage coming in. And that means Nadi could just withstand the barrage. So, good game to come back to casting too. <sighs> it was a good time to exercise my casting chops because my voice is almost dead. And usually I could do, you know, two or three of these one hour games by myself. But now, <laughs> I'm just a, a poor babby with these casts, but hopefully you enjoyed it. We'll see more Starlighter casts in the very near future. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.